Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, uh, looking at the 65XC again here. Um, this is a fault uh, I thought I'd share with you. If I hold down the option key, that should take me into the diagnostics, but uh, it doesn't. If I switch that on now, and as you can see, it just comes up with a ready prompt there. That's after holding option down. It doesn't work. The option key is not registering. Now, if I press the reset key next to it, that works, as it does select, start, and help. Um, so it is, uh, you know, it's just this one key here. Um, now, the first thing you could think is maybe the, the contact needs cleaning up, but this has been cleaned up recently. Um, and after a, a quick check, I'll show you, I'll show you now actually, we'll just take the top off. Um, and if we measure the voltage of the um, connection there on the keyboard connector, we can, you can actually measure the voltage there for the option key. And you can see it change actually as you press the button. So if we just uh, pull this forward uh, a little bit here, um, I'll just try and show you. Can you see um, the, the connector down there? Can you see we've got uh, the solder contacts on the PCB? So I think the last t two keys here, uh, those two function keys, correspond with the two connections on the end. So if, we, uh, if I measure one, I'll just show you. I'll so we're measuring the, the right hand pin there, between ground and the right hand pin. And you watch as I press the reset, so that goes down to about 0.6 of a volt, let go, back up to 519. Now, if I do the same thing on the connection next to it, which is the option uh, key, you'll see we've got uh, 5 volts um, as default, and press the option key. Look at that, it's nowhere near as low, it's not been pulled low enough. That's the problem. It's like over 1.1 volts. That's uh, that's the issue there. So cleaning the contacts up there could make a bit of difference. But for, to be honest, from what I've read, these function keys suffer from this problem, and it seems to be the function keys that get this particular problem rather than any of the keys on the keyboard. Um, so I think people suggest using um, uh, a PNP transistor to act as you know to you know you feed the base of that with the signal um, from the key. Um, and basically, you know, uh, use that to pull it low when you press the when you press the key there. So I might try that. I've got some of those transistors, um, but before I do that, I think I'll just clean up the uh, the contact there on the key just to see if uh, cleaning it up makes any difference to the resistance uh, level there, uh, and, and ultimately the voltage level being pulled. You know. So I'll clean the contacts here, both on the you know the switch. Um, and on the uh, corresponding connection here, which is uh, so that one's reset. It's going to be that one there. So after cleaning the contacts up there, the resistance actually went up. So what I'm doing here now, as you can see, I've just got a wire and I'm grounding the uh, that second pin, and that second pin corresponds with the option key. If I switch it on and then just point you at the screen, hopefully, yeah, you go. Self test. So the option key function is working, and that connects to the GTIA, that particular key, by the way. That's what it's read by. It's read by the GTIA chip. So we are going to need to do something with regards to uh, pulling the logic low uh, in a uh, you know a harder, in a stronger way, because that's the problem. You know, at the moment I'm measuring 1.3 volts there when you press the key. So. Um, yeah, it's these membranes again, you know, I guess if I replace the membrane that might solve it. But also the carbon contacts on the, the keys, you know, part of the issue. In that particular instance there, cleaning up the, you know, the carbon part of the key itself has made the resistance go up a little bit instead of down a little bit. Um, and the interesting thing there is you might have recently seen a video from um, 8-Bit, uh, the 8-Bit guy I think it is, um, on his channel, where he fixed the keys on an Atari, uh, on a, a Commodore PET, and I said Atari then, yeah, Commodore PET, and the way he did that was to resurface the little rubber, you know, the carbonized pads there, with like a, I think he used a kit, a kit that's designed for, to, to do that particular thing, but that kit, it uses the same ink that I used to fix this keyboard previously actually, you know, conductive ink. So there's the diagram there, you can see, you take the connection that comes from the keyboard connector into the base of a 2N3906, the emitter 
goes out to GTIA, wherever that is. Now there's a resistor. I'll show you if you measure in the circuit on a, a 65 exit like this, you'll find a, a 220 ohm resistor between this connection and that connection there, and the same here and the same there. So you can just remove that 220 ohm resistor and swap it with this, uh, you know, a, a 2N3906 using a base and the emitter, let's say, in the right places. And then the collector, you just join to an my ground. So I'll show you what I've done. I've just tested this. This works. Can you see? Uh, just down here, um, there was a 220 ohm resistor there in that spot. Is it R136? I think it is. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the, the base is uh, the middle pin on the uh, transistor there, which goes to the right hand pin of the, where the resistor was, and its left hand pin is the emitter that goes over here. Um, to the, the left hand side of where the resistor was and then the right hand pin of the transistor there uh, is going to a nearby ground so I could just join, you know, if I was going to do this for the other function keys below I could do a similar thing, find the 220 ohm resistor, remove it join up the ground, uh, you know, and just put the transistor there like I said, between emitter on the left side, base on the right side and we're done. Um, but if I show you now, even though, um, let's say I've not, not made any, I've not done anything different to the actual keyboard itself, and previously holding down option um, wouldn't allow it to go into um, the you know, test mode. And also, it wasn't um, disabling, uh, you know, the, 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 the basic BIOS, you know, when you're trying to load games from uh, uh, tape and stuff like that. So that was the problem. That was where I first noticed it. But as you can see, holding down option there, that works now. Uh, now there's no telling whether I'm going to start getting the similar problem with the other function keys. In fact, I might have that already actually. Just doing select and start, they're not working. So I might need to do the same thing with those. So the really strange thing is this circuit only worked for about five minutes and then it stopped working. Um, transistors were all alright, I've checked them, I've even tried new transistors just to rule out, but I think what's happened is that the traces are oxidising um, on the PCB, you know, on the, the keyboard, uh, the, the, the Mylar here, um, and you get a change in resistance. So even with this circuit here, there's still a problem, still can't pull it low enough. Um, there might be a way to tweak this circuit, I don't know, but it, right from the start here I did wonder about just using a pull down between ground and this point here of maybe, I don't know, 10k, 4k7, 2k2, etc. Um, just to pull this nearer to ground and then when the switch makes contact with ground um, it'll be closer to ground, that was my theory. So what I've just done, you can't quite see it, but it's on the underside. I put the original 220 ohm resistors back on. That top one there uh, I seem to have lost, so I've put a replacement 220. Uh, I need to clean up the connections there because there's a little bit of flux and stuff. But I'll show you on the underside, but what I've done on the, the GTIA side, which is the left hand side of those three pins there, is feed through a 2k2 resistor to the nearest ground. Now 2k2 might be a bit low and if I measure that now it's like 1.5 volts instead of the 5 volts it should be. So it's a, a little bit uh, above the minimum, you know, the low logic level and it seems to work that way and then as soon as you press the switch it goes down to about 1.1 volts which is lower than what it was uh, here. I think here when I have tested with these transistors it was down to about 1.3 volts so it's still 0.2 volts higher than the level I've got now just using a pull down. Um, so yeah that pull down over time could be a problem I don't know um, because I'm pulling it quite hard maybe um, 2k2 was not the right size to use let's say maybe from the start I would try 10k and then maybe a 4k7 just see how the voltage uh, decreases each time and see what effect that has when you actually press the switch does it go low enough to actually uh, you know trigger a logic low level you know so that the uh, key press actually, uh, you know, works. But that has worked now. I've done it on the option key, the select key, and the start key. Those three keys work fine. Whilst testing the keyboard, the other thing I noticed when you go into the keyboard diagnostics by holding down option, break is the only key that doesn't do anything. You can't test it in the self test there. But if you type a basic program, you know, a sort of 10 print hello, 20 print, uh, 20 go to 10, run it. If you press break, it'll stop. So you know it says break, break. Uh, you've broken into the the execution there. So that that's a good way of testing that. So yeah, a bit of a squishy mess there. We've got a ground connection uh, on the left hand side there to all three resistors, and each one of them just goes to, let's like, say, the connection on the PCB that goes to uh, the tier 
connection. We've got a little bit of a pin that just needs snipping off there. Perhaps there we go, snip that off. Um, so yeah, a bit of a squishy mess, but actually that's all that's required. And they relate to, let's say, uh, option, select and start. Um, so not expected at all. It's just really weird how things like this uh, have started to happen with this uh, Tari. You know, the keyboard was working fine for a period of time. And no amount of cleaning the connection here or the ribbon on the underside of the keyboard, you know, uh, uh, here or killing the actual uh, contacts themselves on the, the switches doesn't make any difference at all it's like once that resistance starts to change you're uh, you know you're into the realms of needing to do either this what I've done here or use that little PNP transistor um, that I started to use and it did work at the start but then something changed as as I was using it it's almost like maybe a bit more current being drawn on those traces actually um, knocked things out even further you know, it increased the resistance of the traces even further, uh, which then makes that uh, transistor circuit unreliable. So, yeah, really uh, interesting. Um, let me know your thoughts and comments below, please. Um, I do think that the size of the resistors I'm using underneath the 2K2s are a bit too low. Perhaps should be, let's say, 4K7s or 10Ks or something. It would probably still work. There will be uh, an element of tolerance, you know, a, a test in there to get it working. Um, you know, um, just right, but it certainly from the 2K2 resistor, I've, I've, I've tried it, works okay. The um, GTIA doesn't get warm over here, so I'm guessing it should be alright. There must be quite low uh, pull ups, maybe they've got like, uh, I don't know, 10K or something on, on the pull up lines there, so um, it's, it's not like we're going to completely destroy anything, hopefully. So I managed to find a little bit of heat shrink, you can see here, I've heat shrunk off these, so I don't need that mucky tape anymore. Um, it doesn't look too bad actually. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.